Elsewhere tonight, there's an old expression that goes, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. But tonight in a special report, I'll show you how that rule may not mean what you think. If I told you that a man with a knife could run up and stab you before you could pull a gun and protect yourself, what do you think the safe distance would be? Five feet? Ten feet? What if I told you 21 feet? 21 feet is closer than you think. In this demonstration, a police training officer using a rubber knife covers the ground to a second officer every time he tries. Uh, officer Nicely, how did, did you feel like you had a reasonable opportunity to draw your weapon when he was coming at you within 21 feet? Within 20 foot. Well, 21 feet, no, I did not. These blue pads simulate the walls of a house at the Roanoke Police Academy, where, like most training centers around the nation since the 1980s, police teach something called the 21-foot rule. Rule. Here, it's measured from a piece of tape on the floor. And how does somebody know what 21 feet is? <laughs> That's kind of funny. It's a, um, you know, it, it, you're looking at it. It's, it's a, just an estimate. You know, you're, I mean, there's no, no tape on the floor uh, out here every day, but you get used to the distances that we communicate with people. We set it up out in the open with a different assailant. You can see it play out as a recruit from this year's class easily covers the 21 feet before the officer can draw and shoot him. Police say reaction takes longer than action, something they call the reaction gap. We timed the video, and it took just over 1.5 seconds for the guy with the knife to cover the distance. In some cases, the officer draws and gets the shot off, but he also gets stabbed. Remember, the bullet won't stop the man dead in his tracks. Why not just shoot him? No, well, that's not what we're uh, trying to do. And in fact, uh, in our deadly force policy is that an officer can only use deadly force if there is an imminent threat of serious injury or death uh, to the officer or to another person. That's a stricter definition than in some departments and in line with recommendations released less than a month ago by PERF, the Police Executive Research Forum, which wants to close the gap between what is strictly legal for police and what the public expects of them, in part because of public reaction to a number of police shootings in recent years. The new policies say agency use of force should go beyond the legal standard of objective reasonableness, that prosecutors and grand juries often find that a fatal shooting by an officer is not a crime, even though they may not consider the use of force proportional or necessary. Proportional is the key word. Policy 3 explains... In assessing whether a response is proportional, officers must ask themselves, how would the general public view the action we took? Would they think it was appropriate to the entire situation and to the severity of the threat posed to me or the public? Policy 16 even refers to the 21-foot rule as an outdated concept that, quote, agencies should eliminate from their policies and training. Chief Hall attended the conference where the new policies were unveiled and points out that both Roanoke County and Roanoke were already doing much of what was recommended. Often, he says, it's as simple as the officer with the gun slowing things down. Drop the knife, sir. Nobody needs to get hurt. Just drop it. We'll talk. So, in our instance, the officer can simply back up giving himself more than 21 feet. He can put something like a table or a car or a wall between himself and the man, anything to prevent imminent danger to himself or an innocent bystander. The idea is uh, that everybody involved in an incident goes home safely. Uh, you know, the officer, uh, victims, witnesses, and the subject. But none of this changes the fact that legally, Drop if the there's knife, a man sir. with a knife inside the so-called safety zone of 21 feet, the officer may have only two seconds to make a decision. So the takeaway here is that police realize that the public expectation of their actions is evolving and they must evolve with it. But there is also no escaping the fact that officers often must make very important decisions very quickly.